the FDA clearing Moderna's coronavirus vaccine for a phase two study today. CNBC's farmer reporter Meg Terrell with us live yet again. Meg, what can you tell us? Hi, Scott. Well, the timelines that Moderna had laid out were already going to be the fastest vaccine development in history if they were successful. But now they're sped up by a few months. Uh, and they said today that the phase two has gotten the go ahead by the FDA uh, to start. They are also finalizing the protocol for their phase three study, which now they say they expect to begin in early summer. They'd previously said just a couple weeks ago they were expecting that to start in the fall. They say if all goes well, they could be seeking potential regulatory approval and, and potentially receiving that as early as 2021. So what does this phase two study look like? Well, the phase one study initially enrolled just 45 patients and now is adding more. The phase two will enroll up to 600 patients participants, um, half uh, 18 to 55 and half over 55. The participants will be followed for 12 months. Uh, now, just to give you uh, some sort of scope of this timeline that they've already uh, been through, this started just in January. Uh, then they began the phase one in the middle of March. Uh, in April, they were awarded that almost half billion dollar uh, government support award from BARDA. Uh, and May 1st, they established that manufacturing collaboration with Lanza to potentially be able to make up to a billion doses per year. Uh, but these timelines that Moderna and others are talking about would shatter historical records. And just to give some uh, scope of this, uh, there was a study published in 2013 that looked at hundreds of vaccines um, between 1998 and 2009. They found on average, it took more than 10 years for these to go from preclinical work, so before human testing, uh, to get on the market. And there was only a 6% probability of success. Now that's a lot lower than we hear about for other areas. Uh, and analysts do point out these are new technologies now, so maybe this isn't uh, the best comparison. And of course, Scott, there's nothing normal about these times, but we would be shattering records here. Everybody's working on it, that's for certain. Meg, thank you. That's Meg Terrell joining us tonight. Dr. Gottlieb, we bring you back in. Your reaction to what we learned today from Moderna, how promising is it? Well, look, it's all good news. Um, Pfizer, which is a company I'm on the board of, announced yesterday that they were going into a phase one, phase two study, a pretty robust study. Uh, Moderna announced today that they're now going into a phase two study, um, which they had previously disclosed in April. They said that they expected to be in a phase two study in the second quarter, so they've been able to stick to that timeline. j and is moving forward. Merck has a program underway. This is all highly encouraging. I mean, there's a number of companies that really have the capacity to bring this over the finish line and manufacture at scale all pretty far along. And I would say all the companies right now are, you know, largely at equivalent points in terms of where they are in the development process. Uh, by the fall, we should have doses sufficient to, to start large phase three studies, large efficacy studies, to further evaluate the safety and effectiveness of these vaccines and potentially use them therapeutically while we continue to study them in a setting of an outbreak, if we were to have one in the city where you can deploy the vaccine into a large study and use it to help ring fence the infection while you continue to study it. Um, but all the companies have said that they should have doses sufficient to do that by the fall. So this is all very promising. Is, it, is there a chance that the virus, Dr. Gottlieb, surprises us and doesn't come back as fierce as some worry in the fall? Sure. I mean, absolutely. I think that that's not the base case. Um, I think it's going to come back in the fall. Uh, other coronaviruses have been seasonal viruses and they don't just go away. Um, there's a good chance that there's a seasonal aspect to this and we do see it dissipate in July and August. And if you remember in 2009, with the swine flu, H1N1, that circulated in epidemic levels all the way into June. And then it sort of just collapsed in July and August, and we had a pretty quiescent um, July and August. And then it came back in, in September and became epidemic again. Um, and so there is a possibility that as we get into the depth of the summer, this does kind of go away. I mean, it certainly stopped circulating at the levels it is now. But I think we have to expect that it's going to come back in the fall. Now, by the fall, we should have much better tools and hopefully we have the capacity to keep up with the infection and control it from becoming certainly epidemic again, but even large outbreaks in American cities. And so that's what we have to be working towards. But we'll have much better tools going into the fall than we did this go around.